Hello and welcome to this second video from Nella Vision covering basic, functional and practical use of JavaScript. In this episode we will be improving the script we did in the previous tutorial where we added functionality to a couple of buttons in order to make the user able to display and hide content. Today we'll be uh, optimizing the script so all the functionality will be driven by only one button and we'll also be taking a brief look on how to pass arguments from events to functions. And here's a quick look on the script we did the last time. We can see here how we have the two buttons revealing and hiding uh, content. Today we're going to improve this functionality a bit. We got this project here where we're making a website for a corporation, Mean and Evil Productions Incorporated. And it says here, by downloading our software, you accept the terms. But then we want to give the user an option to read the terms. And we do that by revealing content on the click of a button. But uh, when the content is revealed, then the button actually changes state so that the functionality on the button now can close the content. Now I have uh, recreated the old script here in Dreamweaver. And you can see down here in our form text, we got the two buttons. And the first button here is uh, firing off a function called reveal. And the function is uh, nested up here in the script text in the head section of the document. And way down here is the div that displays the dynamic content. Below the first button, we have the other button, which handles the hide function. But I'm actually just going to delete that button now. And I'm also uh, going to delete the corresponding function in the script. Now we're only left with uh, one function, which is all we're going to need for this script. But we'll need to expand this function so it also can target the button itself. And therefore I have to give the button an ID. There are actually other ways to target elements uh, uh, methods called uh, this and current target. But we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. We just stick with the good old get element by ID. Okay, now I have given the button an ID called bot. And now I have to figure out a way uh, for our function to sort of toggle uh, the state of the button. I'm just quickly going to cut out the code for a minute. And instead I'll place an if statement in the function. And you construct uh, an if statement by typing if, then you make a couple of brackets and a couple of curly brackets, just like how we constructed the function. The brackets is uh, going to contain some conditions which will be evaluated when the function runs. And if the conditions are true, then the code between the curly brackets is going to be fired off. And I know for sure that uh, some of the code that we need to fire off is the line of code I just uh, cut out. So I'm just going to paste that in. And uh, I'm actually going to use the uh, value property on the button to determine whether or not to execute the code. So I'll just type document get element by ID and then in brackets and single quotes I type the ID of the button which was but then I'm typing in the property dot value then I'm going to type two equal to science and then I'm typing reveal uh, inside the single quotes now the reason uh, why I'm typing two equal uh, two signs is uh, because I'm not assigning the value reveal to the button. I'm actually just uh, prompting if uh, the value is equal to reveal. And because the value indeed is reveal and the condition therefore are true, then the code is executed in the browser when I push the button. So now I'll go into the code and change the value on the button when it's clicked. And I do that uh, like we did many times before now, targeting the element by its ID. Um, then I'm just changing the value property to close. And that means that once the button is clicked, then the conditions in the if statement is no longer true. 
because the value is no longer equal to reveal. So now we are able to add the toggle functionality because we now uh, can do some code which will uh, only run if the if statement is false. And we do that by adding an else statement below the if statement. Uh, the else statement is uh, constructed just by typing else and then just the uh, curly brackets. Because it takes no conditions, it will only run if the if statement isn't running. And it's not much we have to change, so I've, I'll just copy the code from the if statement and paste it into the else statement. And then I'll just delete the text string on our inner HTML. And uh, in the second line, I'll just uh, change the value property uh, back to reveal again. So on the first click, the if code is running. Second time, the else code is running. Resetting the code, so the third time around, it's back to the if code again. And that goes on forever. And now I'm just changing the static uh, text, so it looks a bit more like a real website. I put the company name in the header, Mean and Evil Incorporated. In the paragraph tag below, I type, by downloading our software, you agree to our terms. I'll quickly create a download link. And I'm also going to rename the value of the button to something more meaningful. But then, of course, for the script to run, I also have to change the value attributes in the script. Read terms, and we call it close terms when the button changes state, and we'll reset it to read terms again. And I'm going to change the text string here. So it says, you will be our slave forever. <laughs> and now we have a really ugly website, but the functionality is bulletproof. Unless, of course, the user have disabled JavaScript. Okay, in uh, these tutorials, you've seen a lot of functions with uh, these empty brackets here. So I think I might just explain how you could use them. I'm not saying they're useful in, in this script, but uh, I can show you a, a, an example with the code we've made. The brackets are used to pass data to uh, some local variables stored in the function. And that sounds like something NASA would do, but it's actually not uh, rocket science at all. So I start by creating a local variable here inside the brackets, and I just call it the terms. Then I'm going to cut out the text string, including the quotes down here. And then I'm just going to type the name of the variable. And now I can actually uh, feed the value of the variable into the function down here from where I call the function. Um, so I just uh, paste the string in, in the brackets uh, down here in my onclick uh, event on the button. And now I can actually really expand the uh, functionality of uh, this function because I can have a lot of different uh, elements calling the function and they can all pass different text strings to the function. Let me just show you how that uh, might work. Uh, if I create another button below here and quickly give it a new ID. And on this new button, I'll just change the text string. I'll change it to, you'll give us all your money. And I'll also change the value to something like maybe more terms. And now on the website, we have two buttons, and they, they're using the, the same function to print out text, but they uh, print out different text.
because they're passing different data to the function. Now in our script here, everything looks a bit out of whack because one of the buttons is changing value and uh, the other isn't. But just remember, you could also uh, pass data for your button values with your click events, or you could even pass the ID of uh, which button should be changed in value and so on. Now we just scratched the surface of passing data to functions, but I'm, uh, I'll probably get back to it in a later tutorial. For now, uh, I just want to thank you for watching. I hope you found this uh, useful and uh, be sure to check out my website and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you.